Mark the perfect man. The end of that man is peace. Mark the perfect man. The end of that man is peace. Mark the perfect man, the end of that man is peace. Mark the perfect man, the end of that man is peace. Mark the perfect man, the end of that man, Savior, worthy of glory forever, awesome and great is your name, you overcame. Jesus, you're worthy of glory forever. Awesome and great is your name. Oh, you overcame. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony, everyone overcome, yeah, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everyone overcome, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everyone overcome. Savior, you're worthy of glory forever. Awesome and great is your name. Oh, you overcame your Jesus. You're worthy of glory forever. Awesome and great is your name. You overcame. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed, yeah, by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you and how you love me. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed, yeah, by you and how you love me. How rich. How rich, 
joy of the Lord. <laughs> we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you and how you love me. God, 
Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God You're the name above all names you are worthy of all praise And my heart will sing How great <laughs> is our God Saints, this, this, this uh, song is a contemporary song um, I know some of y'all probably don't know it Cause you always want to listen to gospel music. <laughs> yeah. Blessings to you. Everybody, blessings to you. We give God all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Your Christ, the Lord, we give you all the honor. Oh, we give you all the honor. We give you all the honor. You are Christ, the Lord Jesus. You be lifted higher, higher, higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, higher. Hosanna in the highest let our king be lifted up Hosanna be lifted higher Higher, higher, 
Jesus, you be lifted. Mercy, rewrote my life. Thank God that mercy rewrote my life. Yeah, I could have fallen. My soul cast way down. Thank God that mercy rewrote my life. Mercy, Jesus. Just a mention of your name. Shame on me for not knowing these lyrics. Jesus, just a mention. I know the lyrics, but I got so much in my mind right now <laughs> that I'm going to be teaching on here, so I'm juggling. The jugglers. <laughs> like fire in winter cold. Like purest, precious gold. Ooh, Jesus, just a mention of your name Jesus just a mention of your name flowers grow the desert blooms again like fire in winter cold like purest precious gold ooh Jesus <laughs> just a mention of your name like a lighthouse in the midst of a midnight storm Like a harbor To a ship That's battered and torn Like bread To a starving empty heart Like fresh Running water to a soul that's parched. Jesus, I hope I'm singing it right. Just a mention of your name. Jesus, just a mention of your name. Flowers grow, the desert blooms again. Like fire in winter cold, like purest precious gold. Ooh, Jesus. Just a mention of your name, Jesus, just a mention of your name, you 
are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are so good to me. You heal my broken heart. You are my Father in heaven. You are so, you ride upon the clouds. You ride upon the clouds. You lead me to the truth. You are the spirit inside me. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. Saints, that's a song by Third Day. That's a song by Third Day. Some of you all probably don't know that song, but if you listen to the original version, it's called You Are So Good To Me by Third Day. It's an old school song. But when I was growing up, when I was growing up, I would hear, my mother would play all these songs. So when she would pick me up from the car rider circle, I would hear all these songs. <laughs> and we used to listen to Spirit FM in uh, Florida. I think that's Tampa, Florida. And Spirit FM was the, the Christian network that would come on. And we would hear all these songs. Now, if you hear the original version of this song, it's actually a rock group. It's a rock group. <laughs> a rock group. But it's a beautiful song. Some of y'all need to listen to it because they'll minister to you. But anyways, everybody, blessings to you. Greetings to you. Now, let's deal with something amazing on here. And let me just also say this, that when you meditate the word of God, that is when you become a carrier of God's nature in all matters. I want you to hear that one more time. When you meditate the word of God, you become a carrier of God's nature in all matters. Everything that you'll come up against, whether it be sickness, disease, poverty, um, a closed door, um, whether it be rejection, persecution. When you meditate on the word of God, you carry God in every situation. Um, the thing about it is that all throughout your life, you hear, but you don't carry the divinity of what you hear. Because if you carry it for long enough, you'll give birth to it. You, you hear me? So if you hear about prosperity, if you're really carrying it and you're letting that seed live instead of aborting it, you'll give birth to the baby of prosperity. But see, you can create abortion with God's words, because you kill that seed, you don't nourish it. You, 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 it's substance abuse. And the, the reason why it's substance abuse, because if you think about it, um, if somebody's doing a lot of drugs, they can have a miscarriage. But the substance abuse is that you're mishandling faith. Faith requires you to get preg impregnated with God's word, but also to protect the pregnancy. You got to protect the pregnancy of power, protect the pregnancy of uh, provision, protect the, pre uh, the, the pregnancy of divine presence. Don't let that seed of the word of God die inside of you. Keep it alive. And so when you get impregnated, you have to be an Elizabeth to your divine pregnancy. In Luke chapter one and on, it talked about Elizabeth. And remember, there, there was a time, even though she's preg impregnated as an older woman, she is now hiding the baby. I want to say this, that some of you all are getting older in years and the devil loves to oppress you on how older you're getting and what's not happening. Let me just say this to you. Abraham was over 75. Um... Who else? Enoch. 
was over 65, I believe. All of these people was older in age. Moses was over 80 years old. What am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that God can impregnate you and he does not have an expiration date. Your spiritual eggs, and even a man has spiritual eggs, your spiritual eggs can be impregnated by God. See, Joel chapter two, when he said that I'll restore unto you the years, Joel chapter two, I'll restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten. That's all impregnation. God saying, even though it looked like it was expired for you to give birth, I'm going to impregnate you. That's what Joel chapter two was talking about. And then if we uh, deal with uh, King David in Psalm 23, that's what he's saying. The Lord restored my soul. The Lord is planting the seed again in the soul. The seed had left. It left its effectiveness. It probably left its habitat. It's probably no longer in that soul, but it is now being replanted in again. Saints mercy is God desiring a payback. Whoa. Whoa. Rabba Soto. Libikila Vasulevia. Rasolevee. Valevio. Valevio. Valeviand. Mercy is God demanding a payback, desiring a payback. The motive for mercy is to be recompensed. God gives you mercy because he wants a payback. So mercy is God's investment because he wants your investment. Mercy is a two-sided negotiation. So when he gives mercy, he's looking for something from you. God gives mercy because God is thirsty. God gives mercy. Dang my teeth white. God give, God give mercy. That's just a little joke. joke. God give mercy because he thirsty. He wants somebody on the earth to pleasure him. Mercy is God revisiting an opportunity for you to pleasure him. Wisdom so powerful, wisdom so powerful, wisdom so powerful. Mercy is God revisiting an opportunity for you to pleasure him. He's revisiting something where you displeasured him so that you can pleasure him. A test is God desiring to be blessed by your receptivity to his mentorship. A test is God desiring to be blessed by your receptivity of his mentorship. Why does God test you? It is a platform for you to perform how you've been transformed. A test is God giving you a platform to perform that you've been transformed, that you're no longer deformed. And that you're no longer choosing the form of godliness, but you're receiving the power. A test is God allowing you to audition on the fact of how well you have listened. So when you go through a test, the father is giving you the microphone to speak up, to communicate your difference and your difference your, deli your deliverance and your diligence. Are you seeing that? God is handing you the microphone to speak up, to talk up, to show forth the fruits of the spirit. The powerful thing about mercy is that God is saying, I'm not ready to give up on my impartation. It's an opportunity for what has been given to you.
to be given back to God. God gives you a chance to take what you have been given and give it back to him. The power of mercy is that now you have the dance floor to dance for God. Imagine the Lord giving you the dance floor for you to dance, the microphone for you to talk, the instrumental for you to sing. The Lord is fascinated with performances. That's why he performs miracles. The law of performance, it exercises your muscle of excellence. The law of performance. God created the law of performance so that you can showcase your greatness. The law of performance is potential now becoming production. The law of performance is now potential becoming production. The law of performance is the opportunity to exhibit your freedom from demons. The law of performance is an ability to exhibit your freedom from demons. The law of performance is God allowing you to increase favor. God does not decide whether favor increases. Your performance decides if favor increases. Five people will be inside of a room. One will say, let me paint the walls. The other four will look at the walls and say, these are some ugly walls. The law of performance is what magnetizes favor to you. Because of the law of performance, nobody could be angry at the favor of another because you got the same divine opportunity to walk in the law of performance. Something about the law of performance so mighty is this, is that when the law of performance is operating through you, it's a grace. It's a grace that makes you watchful. It's a grace that makes you attentive. The law of performance is a grace that causes you to ignore your feelings and allow yourself to tap into what God is thinking. The law of performance, it acquaints you with God's griefs. Because you cannot perform and satisfy the audience of God if you don't know what God does not want to see or hear or feel. So the law of performance causes you to become in tune with God's dislikes, his likes, his pet peeves, his pleasures, his satisfactions, his menu. The law of performance causes you to meet God's order. Now, saints, remember how the word of God said, I think that's Psalm 37, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Well, think about it. The steps of a good man are ordered. That means that God is making an order with your steps. So God gave you steps so that you could engage his order. So God gave you steps so that you could submit to his command. God gave you steps so that you could perform with his instruction. Isn't that mighty? That God actually gave you, um, he gave you, uh, he gave you steps so that you could perform with what his requirement was. The purpose of your steps is not to run to ungodliness or to jog into distraction or to leap into tragedy or for you to drift into error, but he gave you steps so that you could exercise your submission to what he would order you to do. Psalm chapter 37 verse 19 says in Psalm 37, 19, it says that they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And then it also says that in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. 
Psalm 37 verse 19 says that they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And then it says that in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. What is that talking about? That's talking about a sower. Because they're on God's system. They're honoring God with their finances. So when the time comes, when they have evil going on on the earth, the time comes where it looks like things are going left. That sower will have ease, rest. They will be exempt from what's going on in the world. They will be untouched. They will not have one realm of anxiety or backlash or retaliation from the satanic kingdom because they're underneath the hedge of the blessing of the Lord, the favor of the Lord that surrounds them as with a shield in Psalm 512. They are surrounded by the power of God. Saints, not only does the sower operate in protection, but they also operate in provision. So God is saying, because you respected the vision of my kingdom, I'm going to make you a pro in vision. See, provision means that you are professional in God's vision. You're a professionalist in what God's vision is all about. That means that you understand it with clarity, you keep it, you watch over it, you steward it, you guard it, you manifest it, you live it out, you respect it, you fear it, you love it, you rejoice in it, you celebrate it, you need it, you want it. You see that? You see that? All of God's vision has unlimited provision in it. See, saints, the Shunammite woman is looking at provision, but Elijah is the vision. So once she worships the vision and she honors the vision and she respects the vision, provision overtakes her like a tsunami. Remember, Elijah told her that her well will not run dry. Now we go over to Deuteronomy 6, verse 11. Talked about wells being digged that you diggest not. Makai got a miracle. I think he was telling me that um, he didn't put his hand in the stocks. But he got over two thousand uh, plus dollars from a place where he was he was acquainted with, I think his workplace, and he got over two thousand dollars in miracle money that didn't even make sense because he didn't do the standard of what they had told him. But he just been sowing into me. He just been honoring me. Makai, he's a he's a sower. And he don't miss the seed. Um, something, something about Makai is that Makai will actually, uh, he'll find a way to sow large amounts by any means necessary. I, I, I liken him in a good sense to a sowing hustler. Now, I, now I, I mean that divinely. I don't mean that satanically because a hustler in the satanic kingdom schemes but a hustler in God's kingdom dreams. You see, there's a difference. You see what I'm saying? Scheming and dreaming is two different things. Because when you're scheming, you're, you're, you're run over people to get what you want. But when you're dreaming, you'll yield to God to discover it. You see what I'm saying? You'll yield to God to get clarity on it. And he been sowing. He been passing some major seed. So, so money cometh is moving for him. He's not the only one, um, but there's many of you are. Your stories are results of you taking the initiative to live the life that's engrafted in God's vision. 
when you live in the vision of God, you have unlimited provision from God. Now, saints, what I love about the Lord is that his water faucet don't turn off unless you turn the knob. When God opens up his faucet, he just want the water to keep on running. And when you look at the water and you say, oh, it's about to overflow. He like, that's what, that's what, that's what I want. Let it flow over. Psalm 23 said that my cup runneth over. He anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The running over factor, Luke 6, 38, Psalm 23, all dealing with the running over factor. That the father never intended for you to have budgets. For you to be stuck with a certain level of income, but you got to be willing to work his vision, which is in the seed. If you will learn the law of the seed in everything, you will never lack in anything. You have to sow your body as a seed to get health. A lot of people look at the woman with the issue of blood, but don't realize that she sold her body. When she kneeled to the ground, she was the seed going into the ground. Remember, she went to the ground to touch the hem of his garment. You notice where was the hem near the ground? See, you got to become a seed to touch the hem of Jesus's garment. She became a seed and got a harvest of health. But she sold her body as a seed. She recognized her body was a seed. Look, she said, if I just touch the hem, well, her fingers were seeds. She wasn't created to touch no cigarette. She wasn't created to touch no liquor. She wasn't created to touch no beep. <laughs> she was created to touch the hem of his garment. And when she discovered that she was given the seed of her fingers to sow it into Jesus, that's when the miracle happened. She had to recognize her body was a seed before she got the harvest of health. Everything that you have around you is seed. Everything is a seed that if you want God to minister to you in that area, you have to minister to him in that area. So some of you are, you always look at your money, tell us I ain't got enough money. But let me tell you something. That's your ministry. You have a slot in God's heart where he wants you to minister money to him. God got all the money that he want to give you waiting for you. See, God waits for you. God waits for you. You know that, right? God waits for you. He waits for you until you get tired of the devil. He waits for you until you get tired of curses. He waits for you until you get tired of average life and mediocre life and life that's underneath bondages and slavery. Struggle is just the entertainment of information that you were never supposed to hear. Struggle it's just the, the entrance of knowledge that you was never supposed to obtain. So all of your temptation is in the observation in something that you was never supposed to see. Or you either saw it prematurely. You know how many people that want to have sex and smell like pee? You know how many people are having sex right now that smell like cigarettes? You know how many people that are having sex right now that smell like armpits? They smell like Willie Earl? You know how many people that's having sex right now that smell like weed? You know how many people that's having sex right now that, that don't even know how to wash their own tail? They were introduced to sex visually not divinely. So they want to engage a privilege that they're not anointed to engage. Number one, the eyes have obtained its own temptations. La sulivio, randelimi sua. My point in saying what I just said was this, is that people are unprepared 
for what they constantly pursue. Oh my God, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. And as saints, I just dealt with the natural arena of sex. The mental area of sex. People are broken and want to have sex. You ever seen people have sex and then they start fighting? How do you go from pleasure to feud? How? They wasn't prepared for what they pursued. Wisdom has a way of cutting you and showing you what you produce is not confirmation that you was authorized to produce it. I got to get out of here, man. I got to get out of here. Just because you got a house doesn't mean that God gave it to you, nor does God want you to have it. Not because you got a nice car means that God wants you to have the nice car. What you possess could actually be deceptive to what God wanted you to obtain in the current place that you're in. That's why you pray, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The greatest place you could be is in the center of God's desire. God's desire is in his soul. To locate the soul of God, you have to betray your own soul. To locate the soul of God, you have to betray your own soul. To locate the mind of God, you have to tell your mind to shut up. If you don't shut up your mind, your mind will shut up God. If you don't shut up your mind, your mind will shut up God. Who has the remote control? Who could turn the TV of your soul? Who could turn off the TV of your soul? Do you watch God or do you go to sleep? Sleep represents spiritual betrayal. Did not Peter betray the anointing? Did not Elijah go to sleep underneath the juniper tree and betray the anointing? Was it not the angel that told him to wake up? If an angel tells you to wake up, that means that you were supposed to be woke. An instruction could be two things. It could be God giving you favor or God giving you mercy. Let me explain. Mercy could be God saying that you should have already knew to do this, so I'm presenting it to you. Favor means I know that you're listening, so here is something else I want you to graduate into doing. Instructions can have two realms. God showing you how slow you are and God showing you how quick you are. You have to discern what is the instruction indicated. Rasta, Rasta Pere, Replicia Rukufian. You have to detect what is this instruction conveying to me? Is it my slowfulness or is it my faithfulness? It is common to miss divine moments. Why do people miss divine moments? Because they have their own schedule. Why do people miss divine moments? Because they have their own agenda. Why do people miss their divine moments? Because they have their own expectations. You miss your divine moment when you have your own expectation. You have your own schedule. You have your own planning. You have your own calendar. Submission is the ability to locate the calendar of God. Humility is your consistency with the calendar. Faithfulness is your fear of the calendar. Faithfulness is your fear of the calendar. 